podcast about things uh, very much like balderdash wherein we don't know what we're talking about at any given time which is not any different than a normal day so basically it's just a podcast of three people doing normal things perfectly normal nothing to see here move along i'm sure there's some D D podcast where people are swearing at each other that would be far more entertaining uh i myself am chris uh, and I'm Jazz Sequence on the internet. Uh, we have Gary, who's Binary Gary on the internet, and Allison, who is Allison Plus on the internet. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'm fairly sure I got those pointing uh, things uh, pointing in the right direction. Not from where I sit. But no yeah, I might be wrong. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> um, this is a show yeah. where we talk about things, and you can talk Speaking about things with us. If you want to contact that. us, we have a contact form, and we're on Twitter and all that stupid stuff. And uh, Gary is making a costume change, apparently. My hair was pretty, pretty gnarly, and now I'm spinning on my computer. We're off to a stellar start. Let's <laughs> keep going. Normally, this is a show where Allison brings us topics, uh, and then uh, Gary and I try to de de determine the meaning of of those uh, topics, uh, but I, I understand that, that, that those rules might be reversed this time. Wait, what were the, remind me what the rules were. I was busy. Uh, Allison brings us a topic and, yeah. and we figure out what, what that thing is. That was the cue to be like, Gary, take it away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So oh, okay. <laughs> the topic today is, uh, sorry, I, it was getting a weird glare, but I don't think it was the camera. The topic today is permittivity. P-E-R-M-I-T-T-I-V-I-T-Y. Permittivity. So obviously, uh, permittivity is um, just how permitted something is. If, it, if a thing has high permittivity, it means that it is quite permitted. So for example, uh, obviously. currently, uh, there is a uh, impeachment trial happening in the U.S. Senate, wherein we are trying to determine, the Senate is trying to determine whether uh, Donald Trump uh, ex abused his power as in, of the office of the president uh, in uh, asking for Ukraine to <laughs> – I see you shaking your head, but I'm, I'm going to ignore you uh, – for no, Ukraine I'll summarize in a to, second. To, to, uh, to do him a favor and investigate possible corruption uh, with uh, Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden's overseeing of some oil company uh, and, and withholding uh, funding, military funding, in exchange for said favor. Uh, and so we are trying to determine the permittivity of that action, uh, that that is what the Senate is doing today yeah. is is trying to determine the, the permittivity like the senate yeah. gold medal gold medal for bringing that back home <laughs> <laughs> it was a stretch yeah. it was not a stretch it was perfectly permittive is trying to figure out if uh they don't do anything if they'll still get reelected in the next election that's all they're trying to figure out will this will this impact my reelection chances well that's that's Stumbags, okay that's that's the actual thing that's happening, but the but the thing but that that's supposed news, to be happening <laughs> is is determining the permittivity. Well, what what they're yeah. doing by by doing that action is also mm. uh, determining the permittivity of, of Donald Trump's action. I think permittivity is the scale on which the number of permutations is rated. Mm. So if something has high permittivity, it also has like a high number of permutations that can happen. Oh, that's cool. It's not right, but it's a cool idea. <laughs> that's um, what I'm here for. Cool I ideas. Feel like, I feel like if I were guessing at this one, I would make a hair joke. Like oh, I see. But oh, yeah. Per okay. I'm yeah, not, it took me a while so. to get there. Permitivity. Yeah. yeah. 
Or cat related, purr. That'd be spelled differently. That'd be permativity. From the Latin root purr, as in cat. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned so much Latin. Uh, it could be uh, maybe it's a different type of nativity scene a permativity a a permativity (laughs) it's a a nativity permativity so that would be tell me about this this nativity scene please yeah (laughs) i want to hear about it now that now we've gone down that that open that well it's it's something that i i we touched on in when i was in catholic school so my memory is a bit faint but i think it was let's see <laughs> now that, that now I'm thinking about his perm, so I just picture a nativity scene, but everybody has a perm. <laughs> <laughs> a nativity scene where everybody's got a fro. Even even the animals. <laughs> that makes it so much better. <laughs> it does actually. <laughs> yeah. Do you um like what are the typical animals? In a the nativity scene? Or permativity, either one, yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh there's definitely a sheep. Yeah. Uh a donkey. there's, there's yeah. A donkey, yeah. Camel, I, often, I feel. A camel, right? yeah. Yeah. Has anybody done the research to confirm these animals actually lived in, like, a similar region around that time? That's not the... I mean, like, is that's where your suspension of belief is? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, there's no way the donkey would be next to the camel? <laughs> I, I'm just thinking, like, I'm not sure I believe the animals... Um, well, it'd be something small, like it'd be like, oh, well, the two hump camel doesn't live in that region. Hmm. It's the one hump, and this is just. A bunch I mean, I'm not of saying like Fisher Price is like the, like, the be all end all of the understanding. But, but I feel like there's probably some creative liberties at play. Is what I'm saying. Uh, I would say that you're correct, given that. <laughs> <laughs> Based on the region, Jesus probably was not a white baby. Yeah, that's another really great point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He was born with a full beard and long hair. It's... <laughs> yeah, and and by by contrast, probably neither were his parents. Mm-hmm. Parents. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Parents in quotations. Yeah. We know just enough about nativity to be dangerous. I mean, I'm not going to say that, that, I'm not going to say that he, Jesus wasn't a divine birth. I'm just saying, I don't really think that that's physically possible. Oh, it works out though. Because if an angel warns you it's going to happen, then it's okay. That Then it's consensual? Yeah. <laughs> it's all about that angel. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of think the angel might have been misrepresented and (laughs) maybe the angel wasn't so much an angel as like a random passerby or something like (laughs) something like somebody not somebody not joseph perhaps yeah and like oh but it but but no but see what happened was an angel of god came and told me that i was gonna have god's baby it wasn't it wasn't joe me and Joe have not been a thing for a long time. <laughs> Me and Joe. Yeah, Joe and Joseph. It's fine. I'm trying to think. There are no pigs in the nativity scene, are there? I, I don't think there were Apparently, any. pigs I mean, are like, not native to Israel. Yeah. Well, turns out. again, that's the problem we're yeah. having with this story. Judging, judging yeah. by, the uh, as, as Gary uh, called it, the Fisher-Price nativity set. Mm-hmm. Judge uh, pigs are not uh, are not native to. But like, if I'm Fisher Price, right? Why am I not throwing in like cool stuff like an elephant or an ostrich or, I mean, because it's like not what, Swiss because Family what, Robinson. It's the what was the line? It's, it's what was not, the line where I was like, oh, okay, well, we need to make this accurate. It probably comes I down to like Mr. Pig. Price arguing with Mr. Fisher, and. <laughs> Yeah, but they've remade it, like, several times, I have to assume. 
That's yeah, but it's also like not Noah's Ark. On it. What? It's not yes. Noah's Ark. <laughs> Noah's Ark is a separate picture. Yeah, that's set. a different set. <laughs> that's where you, you get all the animals. The molds is what I'm saying, right? Now you've already got the crazy. But they should have the, the, the animals the... kind of mingle from the Noah's Ark, and then they kind of wander over to the nativity scene. Mm -hmm. Forty thousand years difference, or whatever. It's, it's not, not a few a big cows. Deal. I was, I was actually giraffes. trying to figure out how many years difference would that be, and would any of the animals survive it? Probably some turtle. <laughs> yeah, a cockroach. Yeah. Yeah, don't see a lot of those in the Fisher Price sets either. <laughs> yeah, how how did those make it onto the onto the boat? Are you kidding? It was probably well, like okay. it's like Florida. It's hot, right? Like they're everywhere. You can't get rid of the dang things. It's like Florida. Also, like what? Anyway, permittivity. Uh, you're not you're not allowing the permittivity of a cockroach discussion on the on the show. Kind of creeped me out. To be honest about things. <laughs> Can you use it in a sentence? Yeah, Today, today's, topic today's topic is permittivity. Today's topic is permittivity. Of course it can. I thought I, I, thought I already did use old, it in a sentence. Though. No, it, it doesn't. Does it? It's as much fun to say as it is to hear. I, I, spent, I spent five minutes crafting a sentence around permittivity. Was it only five minutes? Because it felt like a bit longer. I avoid the U.S. news cycle, but then Chris brings me right back in. <laughs> <laughs> I um I had to take a break a minute ago because I, I looked on my desk and realized my um my neckerchief had fallen to the floor. My cup's got neckerchief. So it's dusty and nasty. I haven't worn it in a few weeks. Is it something embroidered on it? It says Cup Scout Leader. Oh okay. Nice. Yeah. I think that's a wolf or a bear. Uh, I would venture a bear, given that it's Cub Scouts and not Wolf Scouts. Well, but there are wolves, and there are bears, and there are like lions, and there are tigers. Levels, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is Eagle Scout still the top level? It is, but that's in um, that's there's like Cub Scouts and then Scouts BSA, which is previously called Boy Scouts. Oh. And that's like the once you're um, like in middle school and up, mm -hmm. I think after fifth grade, end of midway through fifth grade, you cross over and then you're in Scouts BSA until you age out at 18 or whatever. Are girls allowed in Cub Scouts as well as yes. Scouts? Yes, and uh, it's a little different in Cub Scouts. In Cub Scouts, it can be just one pack. Uh, in Scouts BSA, you, there's, there, the units have to be separate. But generally what you find is they're, they're registered as separate units, but they do everything together. And then they're different units as they need to be. But That's relatively new, right? Like in the yeah. past five to ten years. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And um, so fun so, Utah uh, trivia yes. having to do. With so that. excited for this. <laughs> so LDS, the LDS Church was a big supporter of Boy Scouts. Yes. Uh, until they allowed girls in. Golly. And then uh, the LDS church is like, yeah, you know that thing that we used to do with y'all for the last 50 years? We're not going to do it anymore, and we're going to make our own. So, uh, and it was a big part of, of, of their, I don't know, youth culture thing in Utah. So now they're going to form, they're going to craft their own uh, form of scouts, and it's going to be probably, you know, all gender segregated because... Because that's what that that's the that's the hill that the LDS Church wants to die on right there. <laughs> Will it pretty uh, much just be a carbon copy of the same model though? Like it won't. Yeah, for yeah. sure, absolutely. It's not, it's it's we don't it want to be. change. Here's what will be different. So Scouts uh, more, BSA really tries to more the line Smith. on being like you can you can um, set up your group with whatever organization you want. Right? It can be a library. It can be a fire station. It can be a church. They're often at churches because that's where there's like space available. Mm -hmm. um but the uh the big like gray area is that uh the charter organization can can add some restrictions that are beyond what scouts has i would assume whatever the lds is doing is going to probably be rooted in some kind of religious stuff first and foremost whereas yeah. scouts is like yeah cool like you want to meet at a uh you know hindu facility fine whatever you know it's it's pretty uh pretty much uh, the concept is built around like uh 
teaching values. And it's, you know, I don't know, a little bit too like apple pie Americana for me, but, but even that, like, I can sort of see like how different groups would, would could court a, sort of, maybe not give that a back seat, but, you know, de-emphasize that, you know? Mm-hmm. I dropped out of Girl Scouts, so I can't speak to it. I was only a brownie when I dropped out. <laughs> I didn't like the activities we were doing. I was I wanted to go camping and do fun stuff like my brother was doing. Allison, that's the first time I've noticed uh, your Canadian showing. What did I say? When you said out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. You didn't notice the maple syrup in her hair? Yeah. Well, that's another Canadian thing. I've obviously. been using it as product lately. <laughs> That's what I thought. I thought like, after I watched that Netflix documentary about the great maple syrup mm. debacle or heist. Yeah, that wasn't. That's was it. it. That's oh, the word. Thank you. It was a heist? Oh, I'm, thinking, a heist, of, I'm yeah. thinking of the molasses spill, uh, which happened in like St. Louis or Chicago. So maybe it was Chicago. Yeah. No, Chicago Both St. Louis and Chicago, interestingly enough, are not in Canada. Yeah, right. No, it, it wasn't. It wasn't in Canada. So that's why I was going to say, but that didn't happen in Canada. But no, it's the molasses no, the, spill. The heist did. It was, yeah. I, it's, it's a good true crime. Uh, uh, well, the, the, is, is the it a great, or is it a the great molasses movie? spill is a good, uh, a good a dis- city disaster story. One would call it a real sticky situation. <laughs> it was, it's not, that's no joke. They couldn't, they couldn't <laughs> clean it up. It was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. That's what I'm here it's like, for. It's like the molasses the molasses factory had a had a i don't know problem and like or or like maybe a truck that was carrying molasses like spilled or something and it was like roads were closed like businesses closed down it was it was it was a big deal it, it, and it really happened in real history it's not just something oh, i'm making really, in my head. really happened in real history But so when they commemorate that, what animals are at the scene? There's like alligators and pigeons or what? what when they the commemorate what? Set, the what animals, molasses spill? The, the, the primitivity. Yes. Oh. oh, what animals are on that, in that Fisher-Price scene? In the Fisher-Price spe- scene of the molasses? I was wrong. It's Boston. Yes. So Boston is known for their tea party <laughs> and their yeah, like, great molasses. Boston, it was not molasses. It was tea. And, <laughs> and their great molasses flood of 1919. Just have a um, real problem also, with people. Also known the as the Boston Molasses Disaster or the Great Boston Molasses Flood. And sometimes referred locally as the <laughs> Boston Molassacre. Oh, yes. What was it? What year was it? 1919. Can you imagine um, the radio? Ra- radio was around 1919, I assume, right? Yeah, probably. Wasn't it? Uh, a large, for the a large storage tank filled with 2,300,000 U.S. gallons uh, of molasses burst, and the resultant wave of molasses rushed through the streets at an estimated 35 miles an hour, killing 21 and injuring 150. Wow. Wow. I was just thinking about how they would say molasses disaster in 1919, like in that... In like Atlantic the transatlantic... Yes, that would be fantastic. I would, I would hear, I would like to hear that on all day long. Uh, the event entered local folk- folklore, and residents claimed for decades afterwards that the area still smelled of molasses on hot summer days. I mean, it probably did. So, you know, so weird. Yeah, and the smell of molasses would trigger something. Uh, desire for cookies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, molasses mm-hmm. can be fermented to produce ethanol, mm-hmm. the active ingredient in alcoholic beverages, and the key component munitions. Wow. Uh, also, rocket fuel. The company used the Harborside Commercial Street tank to offload molasses from ships and store it later for, for later tr- transfer by pipeline to the ethanol plant. Uh, and it stood the molasses tank stood fifty feet tall and ninety feet in diameter and contained as much as two thousand two million three hundred thousand gallons. You so imagine you're like at the end of a pipeline and you like turn cold. the knob and molasses starts dripping out. You're going, oh, that was the wrong knob. That was <laughs> not the, that was yeah. the one I wanted to. Yeah. I was thinking about the, uh, uh, when I was in middle school, 
this is, I don't know why I remember this story. When I was in middle school, we were talking about, I think, Alaska and the Alaskan pipeline. And one of the questions the teacher asked is, what flows through the Alaskan pipeline? Some kid who wasn't paying attention, like, was called on. He goes, uh, salmon? And the teacher, which isn't really that funny in and of herself, but the teacher uh, just, like, absolutely cracked up. Like, enough so that she felt, like, compelled to apologize to the student for laughing at his answer. <laughs> And I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like that much of a stretch. Like an Alaskan pipeline squirting salmon out the other end seems like a pretty Alaskan thing <laughs> A lot thing to of me. salmon. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It's oil for what it's worth. <laughs> so there's a, there's a quote from a Boston Post report too. This is pretty impressive. And I, then I'll be done with the molasses massacre. Uh, molasses yeah, waist deep. Molasses, waist deep, covered the street and swirled and bubbled about the wreckage. Here and there struggled a form. Whether it was animal or human being, it was impossible to tell. Only an upheaval, a thrashing about in the sticky mass, showed where any life was. Horses died like so many flies on sticky flypaper. The more they struggled, the deeper in the mess they were ensnared. Human beings, men and women, suffered likewise. Wow. I would watch that movie because <laughs> you, you, you go into it thinking it's going to be a comedy because it's about a molasses flood and then you're like holy shit this is real <laughs> it's definitely that crossover genre yeah where it's like a <laughs> very dark comedy it's like it's oozing, like oozing it's like, blubber it's like the evil dead of disaster movies <laughs> yeah. what would happen today if a molasses vat exploded and killed people like would we suddenly regulate molasses that's what would happen isn't it Yes, absolutely. Yeah, It'd be we like would overreact. You can't have large containers of it anymore. It would be like areas of the country would be now become like super sites where we need to protect the residents from the potential risks of living close to molasses vats. Yeah, this we yeah we live in a weird timeline, so we stupid overreaction things. Yes, and then southern states would have an open carry molasses law. <laughs> They're just like, no, no, I put molasses on everything. I can carry it with me. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what I'm getting into here. I know how to handle molasses. <laughs> I know how to handle it. Oh, there's nothing worse. Well, like now when, you're, when your jar of whatever has a sticky bottom and yeah. then it gets a sticky bottom in the pantry or whatever. And yep. even if you scrub it, it just like keeps being Never sticky. Gone. Yes. It's like there's That's an invisible why it's so like molasses in Boston. Like there's an invisible hole. Like the, the, the jar somehow has a hole or some some way that the the, the contents inside is seeping through the glass itself. Yes. Because our honey is like bottom. that. I clean the bottom, you, I clean the shelf, and yet somehow it's always sticky. <laughs> so you keep your syrup in the pantry or in the fridge? No, our syrup's in the fridge, our right. honey's in the pantry. Syrup okay. is a fridge thing and honey is definitely a a pantry thing. Okay. Molasses too is a pantry. I, just, I didn't. I was wondering. I didn't know. But I think you can keep. We keep syrup before it's open in the pantry. Yeah. For whatever it's worth. Yeah. I honestly we don't keep it in a two million. I honestly don't think gallon vat on one back. Or the other. I don't think syrup goes bad. No, and we don't. I don't know. We don't. It's <laughs> like, like it's like a mom tattoo and starts wearing like <laughs> fingerless. Get, I like it's studs. in can. It's in cans, so like, I don't think it's. <laughs> Wait, your syrup comes in cans in Canada? Well, it can. I mean, it depends on the kind of syrup you get. But we get this okay. like Montreal syrup in cans, and then we put like basically pour it into another like nicer Receptacle. bottle jar situation. Yeah. You pour it into a bag as you would with milk, and you set <laughs> yeah. that inside a pitcher so you can. Yeah. We don't currently have bagged milk because we're very uh... anti milk. Yeah, we have like all our alternative milks. Yeah. Um, but you could get that. Only, only milk from cows comes in a bag? I was going to say, yeah, you can't get... Um, Coconut milk in a bag? Yeah. No, everything else is in those like Coconut Tetra Pak milk. boxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are those recyclable? I no. hope so. <laughs> no, I don't know. No, I because, don't of the, because of the, like, the, the stuff inside. That metal lining is inside? Yeah. yeah, no. the, yeah. Basically, nothing is recyclable, and all the things that we thought were recyclable were really just going to some dude's house in, in China. Like, I discovered receipts weren't recyclable the other day. What? Yeah. Because I saw when, that they're, when they're that shiny plastic, when they're not paper, which most of them are because of the heat printing right. that they use. Right. Anyway, so that was my sad discovery a few weeks ago. 
Damn it. So, so now you can see me plastic? using my receipts and being like, is there a shine? Is this an old fashioned receipt? Wait, wait, so you said it's a plastic material and not a paper material? It has something to do with like the coating on it, I yeah, guess. Yeah, the heat sensitivity. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it is paper behind the. Yeah, paper. it's paper behind it, but it has that sheen because it's coated with something, I guess. Yeah. I, to be so honest, I like, was so sad I didn't look too much into it. So it's like not only did we fell trees to create this receipt, but also like we pumped a bunch of pollution into the atmosphere to cover it with this heat sensitive material. Yeah. And now we're going to pump a bunch of like, pollution into the awesome. landfill because. How tall you can't are actually you? Yeah. It. I, I would like to print a receipt equal to your height. And your phone number and your height, please. So you know how long the receipts are. My my favorite part is how, um, like now that we know that plastic bags aren't recyclable, all the plastic bags uh, or all the like the things that were plastic that were supposed to be more uh, ec economic or e eco ecologically friendly, um, uh, have this little symbol on them that says like return to a local grocery store or something. Like I don't know. I don't like. I'm sure there's a list out there, but I don't know off the top of my head where I can drop off like random plastic stuff and probably I'm not going to. So like all those things where I actually would have put it in recycling and then it would go to some dude's house in China. Um, I'm now just putting in the trash. So like you think you're being like nice Amazon with like little poppable air filled packets, but I'm just gonna dump them in the trash anyway because I can't actually recycle them. I'm gonna talk to Jeff Bezos about this. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. So let's think. Let's talk about Amazon for a minute. Yes, because we need to get angrier. We need. We need. We need some permittivity to talk about let's Amazon. Let's talk about shipping in general. So, like the shipping stuff you use is like a void, a packing void, right? Amazon has got has taken to using air bags, not the kind of your car, but like little plastic bags. Um, but like that. That's what. What else is there? There's peanuts, right? There's like mm -hmm. the shredded ish cardboard or like the expanded cardboard what other bubble tape packing? or bubble bubble wrap bubble wrap yeah. Like, yeah uh you could just use like paper crumpled paper yeah crumpled paper which would be 100 yeah. percent recyclable most of the time yeah unless you when used was... seats apparently <laughs> yeah uh I like the idea yeah. of packing something with like the receipts of the, the problem. The problem with the paper the problem with paper is it would add weight. And I'm sure that that's the reason why Amazon uses air essentially. Yeah. Cause air doesn't add much weight. Yeah. But also they pack things in boxes that are so much bigger than the actual thing. So that's also I received two, sometimes no yeah. four light bulbs from my car yesterday, which, you know, like a car light bulb is like, you know, a little about the size of a quarter and oh, maybe like that long, you know? Four of those and it came in a box i mean like a shoe box i mean it was it was 84 and a half percent air so so i got uh some i saved money but it was it worth it i i got some air filters for our heaters and that didn't come in a package it just came in the box that the air filters oh. came in so sometimes it's fine i also we also got a calendar the only thing in the box was a calendar the box was this big and this high <laughs> For a calendar. <laughs> Not necessary. <laughs> like, I, I guess yeah. they didn't have uh, an envelope the right size. I mean, so you could have wrapped it in like paper and I would have been happy. Thing. Like, how wasteful was that that they delivered that to me yesterday? On the same token, I happen to sit here looking out my front window, and I see that Amazon truck down my street three times. So am I actually adding more? Waste. I mean, they were going to be here anyway. Yeah, if you if you're gonna if you're gonna boycott Amazon, it probably wouldn't make much of a difference. No, not at all. No. One, now, no if every Amazon one of uh, Binary Jazz's listeners chose to boycott Amazon, it still wouldn't make much of a difference. <laughs> we're generally we're generally an Amazon free household, um, but we're lucky in that we're located in a place that we can be right. Like, so. Here's the baffling thing. Does that actually mean like leaving the house, though? It does. Yeah. So I know. see, we don't do that. That's light the bulbs. sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, these lights. And right? and if we were if we were going to move on Amazon, if we the were going to move to uh, from advanced auto parts, right? That came in in an efficiently packed bulk box, and someone put on the shelf. And I'm actually helping like pay for someone to work in my city. Um, fifty three dollars, same light bulbs, same exact bulb. Fifty three versus fifteen. I like I, in that case, I feel like I sort of have to spend the fifteen and. Yeah, that's a pretty drastic difference. I most of the time for stuff with us, it's like it's not. 
it's not enough of a difference to make the to make to not make the trip to like the local shop that sells it or like the hardware store up the street or and also like convenience wise we can actually just go up and get the thing because of where we're located it's like yeah. a thing that you can do versus but if you're not located somewhere that's as convenient like that's a real privilege so anyway my car has like a big missing headlight right now i have to take the whole assembly to get behind it with the bulb so my car in the driveway has like one headlight and then there's a hole you can see in right to where the battery is it's kind of cool. did it just burn out or yeah the bulb burned out it's oh, okay. been burned out for a while the other day Brian was driving behind me and said you know you have a brake light out I'm like oh i got a headlight out maybe it's time to fix these <laughs> these are important safety features of my vehicle well i have one of i have another one there's another light bulb there's another brake light on the other side mm. Like they make them have it, two for a reason. <laughs> it, it wouldn't pass a safety inspection. <laughs> well, I happen to live in Florida, so does it? I do feel you like not have safety, safety inspections, inspections are not a thing. They're not. I've, wow. Are you kidding, Chris? But also, I mean, yes, seen, I have driven. I have news, driven right? in Florida. I feel like every movie premise is always the person that gets pulled over because their right taillights out. And then I something bad happened. I've never been pulled over for having a tail light wasn't up. working, and the officer didn't say a thing about it. Okay, well, that, the movies well, aren't sure real. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, <laughs> it seems see, like it. okay, here, well, here's bo- my take. The Boston, like, molasses incident is. Here, here, here's my take on, on the tail light out uh, pullover situation. The three of us don't get pulled over uh, when we have a, a tail light out because we are all white (laughs) if we were not if we were anything that was not resembling this particular complexion uh Mm. there would be a greater likelihood that we would get pulled over for having a tail light out it's the peter griffin image you've seen where like the like the officer is there and he has the chart and it says terrorist not terrorist and he's like comparing it to peter yeah that's you're absolutely right that's what it is yep yep it would have been like an afterthought if he remembered oh by the way sir also you have a brake light out as opposed to (laughs) Get your hands where I can see them and lay on the asphalt. Yeah. Do you have any weed on yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Side note: Do you yeah, like? To buy? Do you like when what? people call you sir, or are you just like indifferent? Oh, I don't care. It makes no yeah. difference to me. Are you I, like? It, it kind of like, feels weird. Like it feel like if a police officer calls you sir, I, I feel like like he's obligated. That officer, I felt like was obligated to be polite to me, but really he was just like, "Hey, jackass, slow down." But he can't <laughs> say that. We've reached the time. Gary, where Gary tells us what permittivity means. Permittivity has something to do with space, doesn't it? It does not. It does not. It is the measure of capacitance that is encountered when forming an electric field. So it is a an electrical measurement in engineering. So you would say, oh, what's the permittivity of that that interaction between those two things? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, would not have gotten that in a million not, years. Yeah. But it was a fun journey. But it's a cool word. Yes. That means I like very little to us. I, I like <laughs> yeah. I like using like I'm not it, gonna... I like using it in the wrong context better. Um, I kind of ran into it in the idea of um, thinking about like like why are why do light bulbs have different um, gases inside them? Like why does that make them brighter or whatever? And permittivity was a word I ran across in there that it can also influence permittivity. And I went, I wonder what the hell that means. <laughs> And now I know, and maybe in the future, I'll just skip that word. You I can used bust to know that, what that out meant. at the hardware store. Be like, well, I'm looking for a light bulb with this with many watts and a of... certain amount of permittivity. Yeah, it, the permittivity on this bulb is just not high or low enough for my purposes. <laughs> <laughs> Neither high nor low enough. It's <laughs> it's too in betweeny. It's too in betweeny. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we, now we have questions. These are usually submitted by listeners, but we have none, so it's submitted by ourselves to each other, um, and then we answer them. So um, I, I will do mine first uh, because uh, I'm self-centered, um, and uh, mine came up uh, after Allison mentioned something in Slack, and so I decided, since I didn't know, I, I, I know some of the things, but I, I decided to ask, what is the most obscure former job you've worked? And and this came up. This came about because you mentioned that you worked at, at a call center for an airline. I'm like, huh. 
And then the funny thing is like, I've worked at a call center too. So like doing tech support. So like, I, I get, I know like that whole scene and, and that's definitely yeah. a, a, a thing that people do. <laughs> I worked at a call center for uh, nine days, five of which were training. No, eight days, five of which well were training. Done. Yeah. The third day I'm like, nope, I'll find something else. <laughs> It might be one of the reasons I'm very like phone shy now, actually. I was very conditioned uh, to be like, when I answered the phone, I would be yelled at. So, mm. yeah, was, yeah, I hated it. Because it was for an airline. So, no one's calling because they're like, enjoying the hey, trip. It's so great. I landed on time. Thanks. Yeah. Just wanted to yeah, let you know everything's going fabulous. Well, I mean, I was, I was, I did tech support for MSN. So, uh, wow. I had tech support for MSN. And then from there, I did tech support for Quest uh, before mm. there was CenturyLink. And then from there, I moved and did uh, essentially tech support for uh, Albertsons, uh, except th that was at least internal. So I was doing it was tech support for like the stores, like the store managers and stuff. Um, so that one was a little bit better because, yes, they were frustrated, but they also like were still like a colleague in a sort of remote sense. It wasn't just some random person who is Everyone's totally, on the same team. totally like, going to yell at you. Yeah. Uh, I was doing like collections for people that hadn't paid for Ooh, magazines nice. they'd ordered. Yeah. Yeah. So um, magazine, we sent you three or four. You've not paid. Funny thing about, uh, about collections. What will be uh, courses there? Stop sending the magazine then. I don't care. Piss off. Some, uh, some random person came up to our house uh, last weekend uh knock 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 i was i was in the middle of like making pancakes or something so i was like i was running over there and hoping that i wasn't gonna burn something um and uh he asked for somebody if somebody lived here and it's a name that i've seen on like mail and stuff that's come in and some of the mail that we've gotten that we've just tossed in the in recycling which is probably not recyclable honestly it's probably mm -hmm. just polluting anyway uh <laughs> um because it's been years since we've been here so we stopped like doing like forward to whatever or return to sender or anything we've just started chucking it because like i mean there's a statute of limitations right like it's two years we're done collecting that stuff um and so he was asking for that name and I'm like, no. And he's like, he, and then he kind of like had this like, look like, oh, okay. It's one of those. And he says, he hasn't been here for a long time. Has he? I'm like, nope, we've been here for about two years. And he's like, damn. <laughs> and so, and so he, he's like, thanks. I'm sorry for interrupting with your time, whatever. And he goes, he walked away. I'm like, he was totally a repo man. <laughs> he's totally knocking at the door being like, where, like, give me my cash. And he thought he was going to be like, he thought he was just like gonna find somebody who's avoiding paying their bills or whatever and instead he, find, he finds out that he's got a whole heap of work in front of him trying to track down this person who he doesn't even like now he's got no leads whatsoever he's just in the wind yeah <laughs> i'm trying to think of other like so obscure meaning like like random had... things that somebody wouldn't assume like having a conversation with you that you worked at uh -huh. like i worked at a grocery store for two years Right. Like, I mean, I worked at a grocery store for longer than, but I, mean, I was, I was like, I, my first job was a bagger. I actually, my first job was a newspaper boy. And then I was a bagger yeah. um, for a long time. I was a newspaper boy, like, but not like entire station wagon full of newspapers, like a thousand addresses. I broke yeah, down I cardboard for a bike shop. Ooh, nice. Wow. Nice. I also had lots of random uh, ah. jobs uh, mm. when I was doing like temp work. I did temp work for a while. Solder monkey. Uh, temp monkey. temp jobs uh, are the ultimate in random obscure jobs. My favorite one was just data entry, um, mm -hmm. where they had like a shared uh, a shared drive, and I was listening to Oingo Boingo all day, and realized that Oingo Boingo makes data entry and menial tasks work, go really fast. Um, but I also Here's like a... I filled boxes with packing peanuts and and taped them uh i drove around uh san francisco once with some dudes in the back of the car with their cell phones testing like signal range and going hello 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 mm -hmm. like just drive around san francisco with people in the back like like for four hours um i once uh uh watched Here's a Flor very florida job Are you ready for this sure this is like a florida job for most kids in high school wait staff at a retirement home <laughs> uh, I, I washed and vacuumed cars for a rental agency at an airport. That was probably the that was probably the worst temp job I, I ever did. Uh, it made me it made me not want to do temp work anymore. <laughs> I think. Yeah.
I worked for a floral event company. I mean, the hula hoop thing, people don't guess, but it's not their fault that they're not guessing it. The hula, hula hoop thing? Like I, like I used to teach hula hooping and perform with my hula hoops. But oh. like that's less obscure and more random. Uh, it's, it's a fine <laughs> line between obscure and random. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.